Hello everyone, this is Mohamed Tuhami, author of Midway Simplicity and welcome to a new episode of the Midway Decluttering Show where you will find tips and advice on how to declutter your first 100 items. And today I have a very special guest. She is the queen of decluttering, Colleen Madsen from 365lessthings.com and the winner of the number one simplicity blog of the year at the contest that we held back in 2012. <laughs> Welcome, Colleen. It's an honor to have you again on the show. Thank you very much. You give me such a good rap. Why wouldn't I come by for a chat? <laughs> <laughs> you deserve it. You will deserve it. So, Colleen, let, let's start by your story. How did you specifically declutter your first 100 items? Well... So I've decluttered cluttered before and, you know, really just only skinned the surface. This time around it just came to me out of the blue to declutter slowly and just take it one thing at a time, one day at a time. And so um, the idea was it to make it as easy as possible too. So the best place to start was with the easiest things. And um, so the first 100 was a cinch really because there wasn't much to think about. Just found the things that I just knew I didn't really want and wanted to get out of the house. Mm. And it was easy. You didn't face specific challenges when you started this approach? No, not really. Probably because I'd, I'd moved house um, about two and a half years before and we'd downsized in houses. And so there, a lot of stuff came to light that just wouldn't fit in the house we're in. So I decluttered several things just so we could uh, fit into the house to begin with. But it was obvious to me through that moving in process that um, there was a bunch of other stuff that just really had to go. And my husband keeps um, considering the idea of retiring and traveling and uh, the less stuff you have, the smaller home you need to have to store it in and if you're not going to be around most of the time you don't want some huge big house that you're paying huge land taxes on and, and that sort of thing so all I did was decide which things I could really easily live without. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that, that was the main objective of decluttering to, to just make traveling easier to be you know light uh, or there were other objectives in your mind? Uh, that was the main objective, you know, I probably wouldn't have even thought about decluttering any further than I, know, than I had already, mm -hmm. except that, you know, that subject kept coming up and then one New Year's Eve, I just, oh, well, not one year, New Year's Eve, one third of January when they were talking about how people give up on their New Year's resolutions, I decided, well, why don't I get rid of one thing a day? Because mm. I'd been thinking I don't want to do this the hard way. I don't want to disrupt the whole house to do this. And um, it just came to me to do one thing at a time and just focus on that one thing. So, uh, yep. That's great. So you, your approach basically, I think, with that way, anyone can declutter his first 100 items in 100 days which is three months or something Absolutely. like that. So it's not a big deal, you know. If just one item Absolutely. a day, then that's great, that's great. So um, w one of the common challenges that people face is that they are overwhelmed by too many stuff so that they can't even think of decluttering. They, they, cannot, they are afraid of, of approaching this, this thing and they think that one item a day it isn't a big deal. It's, it's not going to make a big difference by, uh, you know, these piles of stuff that I own. So what, what can you say to them when, when they can't see the significance of small actions accumulated over time? My main answer to that is that one thing a day is better than nothing every day. That mm. isn't going to get you anywhere. So long as you're doing one thing, you're making a difference. Mm. If you want to do five things, ten things, go right ahead. If you want to do mm. it quick and easy, um, you'll find it's not so easy. You'll find slow and steady um, mm. certainly is a lot easier. You don't have to focus on the hard things. And then the further along you go, the more ruthless you tend to become yeah. because you start seeing that space, even if it's only a small space. 
you know, it might be a room that you've got full of stuff and you think, well, that's the best place to start because I know most of that stuff I don't use. So even if you just clear the doorway and then clear mm -hmm. another foot into the room, you've just got to be happy every day with whatever you do so long as you're doing something. And a question might rise here, which is, uh, what if I'm living in a so cluttered and consumer-based environment that I cannot resist my purchasing desires? So if I declutter one item a day, I, in, on the next day I will buy 10 items or, I, you know, the flow is not balanced. So what to do about this issue? Yeah, that is a big issue for a lot of people. I must admit I had a bit of a head start on that one because uh, having lived in America for um, seven years prior to our move back to Australia, I was um, familiar with paying American prices for things and when we came back to Australia everything seemed so expensive <laughs> so it wasn't a big stretch for me to decide I'm not buying anything anymore unless I absolutely need it because I didn't want to pay the prices for it anyway um, but for other people yeah the reality is if it keeps coming in you're not going to make any difference by decluttering you're wasting your time you just have to pull back you know, look at those things that you're getting rid of and ask yourself, why did I buy that in the first place? I hardly used it. Why did I think I need it? And then apply that when you go to the mall, you know, the shopping mall. Look at the things you consider buying and, and really think, you know, do I need this? Is it just going to add to my clutter? You know, it takes, you know, strength for a lot of people to start to see that, but you know, it's just the reality. You've, you've, you know, you've got to be realistic about it or you're wasting your time. Yeah, and you must have a compelling reason behind your decluttering activities, you know. You don't do it as, as an interesting act or something. You, know, you just need a compelling reason why I'm decluttering so that you can keep on the motivation. And, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And most people are just tired of being, you know, yeah. inundated with the clutter. Yeah. So, um, you know, decluttering is, uh, you know, the, the idea of, of not shopping is crucial to decluttering because, yeah. you know, that's how, that's what got you there in the first place. So yeah. Need to stop. And, and what about people who lack organizational skills? You know, they, they, even if they declutter their items, they still it looks like things are scattered everywhere because they, they do not have the, the skills of putting things in, in where they belong, you know not assigning home for everything that they own. So they, they, they don't feel that the value of decluttering because they still can see things scattered everywhere. How, how to overcome this and how, maybe how to acquire organizational skills or, you know. The one thing I always tell my readers is that you don't need any fancy organizing skills. Just start decluttering you know, you're going to be advancing yourself no matter what. If, you, if you're getting rid of stuff, things are going to start finding their place. Um, the the, de the um, organising takes care of itself. Once you get rid of the stuff you're really not using, once the kitchen drawer isn't full of utensils you aren't using, it's going to be easy to find the things you do. It's going to be easy to keep all the things that belong together together because you're going to have the space to do it. And, you know, that may take a little while if you've got a lot of stuff, but um, certainly the less you have, the easier it is to organise. And that's the beauty mm. of decluttering. It's not yeah. just a case of getting rid of things you aren't using and the guilt sometimes that's involved in that. It's also um, making your life easier, making everything you do within the house easier because you can find things when you need them, you can get at them more easily. So yeah, don't worry about the organising. Like I tell my readers, it'll take care of itself once you get those levels down. Yeah. And, and what about people who are overwhelmed with other tasks and responsibilities and people to take care of and maybe kids and children, they don't have uh, or cannot find time to do the decluttering work required? For them. Well, my, my whole blog is based around 10 minutes a day. Now, the fact of the matter is that clutter's all come into your house. You've gone out shopping to buy it or you've sat online looking at online stores to, fi to find the stuff to bring into the house. 
you know, rather than go out shopping, stay home and spend that 10 minutes, half an hour, an hour even if you want, and declutter something rather than bring something else in. Um, you know, anyone can that's, find 10 uh, minutes a day. That's when okay. I first, <laughs> that's, of course there was, yeah. yeah, when I first started, because there were a lot of things I knew I didn't need, I would just spy something one day while I was, you know, getting something out of a cupboard or or cleaning up in the bedroom or whatever and go, well, I don't need that thing and I'd just go and put it out in my departure area in the garage and it's as simple as that, you know. See one thing, go, I don't use that, I don't need that, put it in the garage. It's no different to picking up after the kids or making your bed, really. It can take as little as a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's very true. That's very true. And sometimes we find resistance from uh, our spouse, our family, our friends. They they perceive us as losing our mind, getting rid of our stuff, you know, what are you doing? Uh, so uh, how to overcome this resistance? How, how to do the work while all uh, people around you are discouraging you? I think you've just got to do what's right for you. Um, when other people around you start to see how much easier it is for you to take care of your home, how much easier it is to locate things in your home when you need them, how you're not struggling at all without all this stuff, how much uh, freer you are to go and do the things you're enjoying, you know, you like to do um, because you're not forever out shopping for stuff you don't need, you're not at home trying to organise things that are a mess because there's so much, they may start to think that's not such a bad idea after all. I really haven't encountered much resistance. I didn't even encounter any resistance from my family when I suggested yeah. we stop buying presents for one another. They were all too keen to hop on board, <laughs> so I'm pretty <laughs> to that. <laughs> but yeah, you know, people are always going to think you're crazy. I do encounter the odd person that um, hmm. seems to think that I'm a bit of a... Um, Oh, I don't know whether it's a Scrooge or a you know a, or what, but I'm happy, and they can see I'm happy with it. So they probably think it's not such a bad idea, and then they generally start asking my advice. So <laughs> that's just fine. Yeah. I like being different. Yeah, it's it's always good when you hear that you are crazy. Then most probably you are on the right track. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> And uh, let's let's move into the decluttering decision making process. So, for example, if you have items that are associated with good memories, uh, that but but you don't uh, any longer need this stuff, but but the memory uh, of when you used them, when you got them, you know, uh, how to let go of that? Yeah. I um I must admit I must have been so ready to declutter when I decided to do this thing a day because as I said I suppose I got rid of the the things like that that I had disassociated myself with the most um, but then the more I um, started to enjoy the space that was opening up around me the more the easier it was to let go of things like that because I knew it wasn't. Um, erasing my memory of those happy events and, you know, people I loved and even ones that, you know, people who had died and, and, and gone out of my life, you know, they're only gone in person. They're not gone from my mind and, you know, I still enjoy thinking about them and there's plenty of things in my day that remind me of people I love. Um, my mum, she's still alive. Um, whenever I laugh, I think of her because she was always the great laugher in the family, you know. <laughs> Laughing was her thing. It's just little things like that that remind me of people, so I don't need stuff to remind me, you know. Just things that happen throughout the day and even things I see when I'm about, uh, out and about. I, I don't mind having a browse through an antique shop and uh, I usually come out with nothing but I wander through and I go, oh, my grandmother used to have one of those, my grandfather had one of those and, and those sorts of things. So I go home, I tell the people at antique shops they should charge admission fee because uh, I have such a good old time in there and they come home empty-handed and they make no money out of me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. There's no problem for me, you know. Mm. You've, you've got to make a decision whether you, you know, want to hold on to that stuff and be unhappy in a cluttered atmosphere or, mm. um, or just learn to let go. And like I said, pick the easiest ones first and mm. you'll get the roots as you go along. 
Yeah. So your, your advice is not to start with these items. Start with the easy items first. And when you feel oh, the absolutely. value of the crown, it will help you. Okay. Yep. And, and what about the, the precious, mm -hmm. expensive, valuable items that you own? And you cannot find a way to sell them. So you just cannot get rid of them just like that. And at the same time, you no longer need these expensive items. So what to do um, about that? I haven't really encountered anything like that much. Um, I sell a lot of stuff on eBay and um, yeah, no problems there. I just, there's all sorts of ways I, I use other than eBay at times. Um, if I know people that are interested in something that we have that, that I'm thinking of selling, I'll let them know that I have it. A lot of the time they'll buy it off me before I even um, try to list it on eBay. Yeah, um, uh, you know, I, I received yeah, this question. I, uh, I received this question specifically from a reader. Her con main concern was uh, she she is not sure. She was not sure whether the person who will buy this item will take care of it, like she did or not, because this is expensive. So, so she doubted that uh, anyone would it, will you know <laughs> will admire or respect the 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 value of these precious items. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think there's um, in this strange world we live in, there's a collector for just about anything, and it's easy enough to tell whether someone's going to appreciate it or not. I've had certain things that, not because of their value, but because they were useful for me for a long time, or they are sometimes some things that are even damaged, but they are still useful for somebody else. Um, Things like that I often get rid of on free cycle. Um, and it's easy with free cycle, you can vet the people who are asking to have it and it, you give it to the person that you think might appreciate it the most. But when it comes to selling things, if they're valuable, you, no one's going to pay the money you want for it unless they're keen to take care of it, that's for sure. But you've got to divorce yourself from, mm. um, you know, that sort of connection with yeah. things, really. Yeah. And, and what about valuable gifts that we received from people that we love? Uh, so um, how to how to get rid? Of, because if we we think if if they discovered one day that I decluttered one of the items that they sent me as a gift, they will be mad or angry at uh, at me. So what to do about that? I would be inclined. It depends on the person that gave it to you. I think sometimes some people encounter some fairly difficult to get along with people in their lives, I must admit. <laughs> I've been lucky again in that respect that, you know, I just, I either offer it back to somebody if I think they would want it back. Um, if it's a family heirloom or something like that, you can offer it to another member of the family. Um, but my attitude towards gifts is when someone gives you something they should give it to you unconditionally. And if you decide that you don't want it anymore, then you should have the right to do what you like with it. Family heirlooms are a little different because somebody else, like I said, in the family may be happy to be a caretaker of that thing. But, you know, I, I used to sell furniture and, the, and people would come into the furniture store and tell me, oh, we've got this table at home. One guy said he was going to hoist it up in his garage over the car. It was, a, it was a family heirloom and they didn't feel like they could get rid of it, but they didn't want the thing. And I said, oh, offer it to another family member. Somebody else might want it in the family. You know, there's the beauty of email and that sort of thing. You can connect with a lot of family members, you know, and, and just keep offering something until somebody wants it. But in the end, you know, if, if you don't want it, you don't want it. Pass it on. And and clarify your intentions. It's not a personal issue. It's just that you are decluttering your life and and that uh, yep, it's, it's not exactly about the person. Right. It's about the the, the need. I no yep. longer need this item again yep, anymore. That's in exactly right. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's yeah. not that you don't appreciate it was given to you in the first yeah. place. But yeah. you know, if you've got to a point in your life where it's no longer something you want, then it yeah. should be up to you to decide to pass it on. Yeah, mm. and and what about the internal struggle or the dilemma of what if? I will need it one day. What you know, this security issue. You know, I don't want to let go of it because I might need it yeah. someday. So 
Yeah, <laughs> that was um, kind of a bit of a subject on my uh, blog post today, actually. But I think in this world of you know overconsumption, we've forgotten what need really is. There's a big difference between need and want. Yeah, in this life, we probably really only need food, shelter, clothing, uh, and love, and all the other extraneous stuff is probably um, not particularly necessary. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't let that concern me a great deal. Um, the subject today was about um, um, stocking up on what a lot of people think are essential items, you know, having a spare bottle of shampoo in the cupboard and, and you know, half a dozen cakes of soap and, you know, four lighters and, you know, all these you know, extra things. I, um, I buy my shampoo and the last one's about to, you know, the one I'm using is about to, to run out. Um, but people say to me, oh, you know, I, 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 but I, I need to have this and I need to have that. But you've really got to sometimes assess what need is. Um, you'll get a lot of people who were raised by parents who were um, – um, come from, you know, times where things were short. But I think also if they look back at those times, their needs were a lot different to what we think of as, you know, needs these days. So, yeah, they were probably as uncluttered with those um, backups than, you know, than what we aspire to be. And uh, do you have general rules or guidelines for people to, to help people make their decision when they how to decide if I should keep this item or if I should let go of this item. So do you have general? I actually yeah. yeah I actually have a um, um, a decision making guide on my blog that um, my readers can go to that will give them you know a, a, a series of questions to uh, decide whether it is something they you know. Uh, think they want to keep it or not. They're not thinking about it unless they are undecided whether they want it or not. Mm. You know, you're not going to start questioning, you know, the favourite things that there's no way you're going to get rid of. So, you know, if you are undecided, it's a good idea to have a, a list of, of questions, you know, do I need it? Is it taking up space? You know, yeah. you know, is it a burden on me? You know, all those sorts of things. Yeah. And so, is there yeah. a link for that, uh, an easy link that you can share now or you will send it to me later on and I will post it on on the interview? Um, I, I'll share it with you later, but it's just at the top of my blog where the heading is, there's um, some tabs up there, and one of them is uh, guides, and in guides, guides is that decision making guide. Yep. This, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So at 365lessthings.com, people will yep. find a, a link in the header called guide, yep. and when they click yep. on that, you will find the decision making guide. Decision making guide, yep, okay. absolutely. So it's 365lessthings.com. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, before we end the call, I just if, if you can share with us a couple of your favorite decluttering techniques that are not too time consuming that people can use while they are decluttering their stuff. Well, like I said earlier in the blog, just in the interview, um, just um, look around you during your daily meanderings throughout the house while you're doing things, while you're folding the washing, while you're cleaning, any of that sort of thing, just look around you. If you see something in doubt, grab it, give it some thought, even notice it there and then and think about it over the next 24 hours and, and make a decision. You don't actually have to make decluttering a task. It can just be, you know, open a drawer, have a look inside, you know, and find something, you know, decluttering to me doesn't have to be up, you know, a big upheaval of your home. It can simply be just being vigilant and looking around during your day. Um, the other thing is what can make decluttering seem difficult is how to get rid of the stuff. Um, a lot of people would just happily put it all in a dumpster, which, you know, that's not my thing. I'm all into uh, recycle what you can. Um, so the best thing is to have um, a departure point somewhere in the house. I have a garage, so I have my departure point is in the garage. Whenever I've decided this is something I'm going to get rid of, 
I take it out and I put it in the garage. I have a box for things I'm going to sell on eBay. I have a box for taking to the thrift shop and, um, you know, and the recycling bin's out there too. So if it is garbage or it is something that's just paper that can be recycled, it can just go in the bin. So um, you don't have to, um, like people often ask me, if you decluttered one thing a day, um, how do you get it out of your house every day? Well, I, I didn't get it out of the house every day. I put it in the garage and when there was enough to take a load to the to the thrift shop, that's what I did. So, And when I felt like listing a bunch of things on eBay, that's what I did. So, yeah, just have that departure point set up and make the decluttering itself as easy as possible. Mm. So it's uh, just any place that you can get things out of your site? and yep, then store right. store them uh, there until the, the the right opportunity comes where you can just throw it away yep. or let it go where it yeah. might be more useful Absolutely. you know mm -hmm. and maybe Absolutely. maybe you can even donate it to charity you know oh absolutely that's what i do right. my most of my stuff really went yeah. to the thrift store and after a um, couple of years of doing that, I thought it's probably time I volunteered at the thrift store. So I go and do a shift there every Wednesday, and that's when I take my load of stuff to the thrift store each week. So, yep. It's great yeah. because I get to see it sold and, and walk out the door while I'm there a lot of the time. So <laughs> I know that it's looking good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's great. Thank you very much, Colleen. Do you have any final quotes or words of wisdom that you would like to uh, leave for our listeners? Just the same message. It doesn't have to be difficult. Just one thing at a time. Even when you're doing a, you know, even if you wanted to do decluttering quickly, it's still one thing at a time. No matter what, yeah, you know, there's no such thing as multitasking. I don't believe. <laughs> So, yeah, just focus on that one thing at a time. Just grab it and, and get it out of there. Thank you very much, Colleen. It was such a pleasure and honor to have you again. It was great being here. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.